everyone, George here. So excited today. I'm um, with my friend and esteemed colleague, Jeff Sensuke from Aquarium Design Group. We're in a beautiful home in Texas and we've got this amazing hardscape only aquascape featuring some absolutely stunning outer angel fish. So a bit of a special video this one. I'm not just going to be giving you beautiful footage of the aquarium, but I'm actually going to film some behind the scenes with Jeff. So I really hope you enjoy the content, guys. If you do, give us a thumbs up. Drop me a comment below. What plants would you put in here? I don't, I think, I actually like it without plants personally, but I know that some of you would be like, oh, we should put plants in there. Always interested to know your thoughts. So as you can see, we've got this huge black sheet behind us. This is stopping reflections from these huge patio doors. And Jeff's just, composing the shot, setting, he's got his camera set up on a proper video tripod. Super sturdy. The camera he's using is the Lumix GH5S, which Jeff really likes because of its super low light capability. It's not a photographer's camera, it's more of a filmmaker's camera. Crop sensor, but it still has fantastic image quality. So here was a front shot of the camera. It's actually a Leica glass so I think Leica and Panasonic collaborate and yeah Leica if anyone knows is super high-end so yeah we can see Jeff's using a third-party monitor on here which is completely sort of swivelable and from any angle you can even do selfies I guess you just switch it around can't you so you can film yourself this is a really cool idea I've, I've learned not to worry about this too much because this is just yeah. uh, I sort of ignore that because you can edit it yeah, post-process. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, 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 my, my capture footage is it's highly editable, very flexible. Yeah, footage, yeah. So color, yeah. Uh, white balance, and everything else will be adjusted in post. Yeah. So this and is just to give you some reference. Yeah, let's make sure you compose, so you compose it and you can get a rough right. idea, you know, obviously the focus. And obviously composing here versus here is much yeah, more less Yeah, it's easier, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so Jeff's just training the fish over to him. So we get a nice video of them all facing the same way, which always looks great in a video. Makes them look more natural. Let's talk about the, um, the actual fish themselves. So these are Altum angel fish. They're wild caught, is that right, Jeff? They're very fragile, aren't they, the wild caught Altums? This is why they go all, through it. Yes, the shipping, acclimation, getting them well. Um, but these came in and within a matter of days, they were in the client's aquarium and, yeah. you know, zero issues. Wow. Um, and as you can see, they're very responsive to food. And um, I think the very tall aquarium is something that they really, really like. appreciate too. I mean, they just, you can see the color is robust. Um, the yeah. fins are getting the streamers back and the fins yeah. and just uh, everybody's just a very, very, seems very comfortable. Yeah. This fish in this it's, it's not too brightly lit no. either. So. The lighting is what two Kessel 160s? Yes. And they're controllable, remote control. That's right. Then we have the backlighting, of course, with yeah. the frosted vinyl. And how is, is the backlighting LED or fluorescent? <coughs> it's LED. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so it's nice and cool. And yeah. Very low power consumption and just a very subtle effect. Yeah, that's great. It's... So the wood in there is manzanita wood. That is manzanita. Yeah, yes. and we have. Siri stone, huge pieces. I think Mike, Jeff's brother, was involved with the installation and I think he had to get inside the aquarium. Yes. And then those stones were passed to him Correct. whilst he was inside. So, as I said, the lighting is the Kessel A160 Tuna Sun and it's actually remote controlled from outside the aquarium so the clients can easily turn the lights on and off themselves. So now you can see the aquarium with the lights off, but the back light's still on. I actually really love this. The, the wood is perfectly silhouetted against the background. The fish almost look like birds flying. I think it's beautiful. The contrast, absolutely. And I can see in, 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 a, in a dark evening when their clients are relaxing in their living space, you know, this is absolutely perfect. So peaceful. The fish are so graceful, swimming in a, a beautiful kind of loose shoal. Even the bubbles, I'm not normally a big fan of bubbles in an aquarium, but I just think they add a sense of movement. It's, they really add to this kind of vertical nature, the tall nature of the aquarium. And this is an important note as well. So 
the aquarium is relatively tall, uh, which suits the aspect ratio of the fish. The angel fish, as you can see, are a relatively tall fish, and thus we need a tall aquarium. Yes, yeah, so this is an interest. This is an interesting topic, isn't it? So sure. people will often comment and say, you know, these fish are removed from their natural habitat. It's not fair. But you could argue that they have a better life They're, here. Sure. They, I mean, when the fish that we know will adapt, and I think when we provide the conditions. Yeah. Um, you know, and this is just this is a human endeavor. This this is similar to what humans have done with, with dogs, dogs and, cats and yeah. birds and other domesticated yeah. animals for a long time. Okay, let's just talk about the technical equipment quickly. The tank itself is 10 feet by two feet by three feet tall. Uh, this gives us a total volume of 1,600 litres or thereabouts. That gives us about 425 gallons. Uh, lighting, we've got two Kessel A160 tuner suns and you might think that's underpowered, but there's no plants in here. So absolutely no need to have more light. In fact, I think the low lighting enhances the fish's behavior it's going to cause less algae problems so actually very wise move for the guys to use the castles and the great thing about the castles is this shimmer that they produce so a super point source this gives us um, a tiny beam of light which is refracted by the surface movement 
of the water, casts these beautiful shadows, looks really natural. Most of you may have seen my castles at home on my 1200, and a lot of you prefer that kind of light to the Twin Star for this reason. So the fish, Altum angels, like I said, wild caught. They're so tame. Me and Jeff have had a really good time just kind of playing with them, getting them to pose for photos and filming. It's been really good fun. They're really engaging, and I think it's a credit to the system that they're so comfortable, that they can be so brave and, and content, and obviously they're well fed. They've only been in here a month. Jeff tells me that they actually, the suppliers acclimatise them for six months to ensure that they are suitable for aquarium life. Now, there was a, a relatively big problem with Altum angels at the Wild Court, getting them into the aquarium too quickly and they'll perish because they're just not adapted to these aquarium additions. So this six month kind of quarantine and adaption phase is, is really essential to ensure the kind of robust nature of the fish that we can see right now. Other fish we've got in there, the Bleeding Heart Tetras, a real classic. And we do have some Geophagus cichlids and I've just spotted some uh, Bristlenose uh, catfish as well, obviously to help uh, control the algae. Huge pieces of Siriu stone, beautiful manzanita wood. And it's a real case of less is more, I think. It's a fish tank, but it's executed, in my opinion, perfectly. I don't know about you guys, I actually don't think I would plant this. I actually really like the minimalist kind of style. And if you saw the surrounding kind of interior uh, styling and design of the living space we're in right now, the actual design of the scape perfectly uh, harmonizes with the interior design. So real hats off to Aquarium Design Group, both Jeff and Mike. So impressed with this aquarium. You guys know that I'm a huge planted aquarium fan and nature aquariums in particular. But what the guys have done, they've used elements of the nature aquarium philosophy and they've, you know, aquascaped beautifully without the plants. And I think it's a real good lesson for maybe some of you that are watching that you might not be confident with plants, you might not want to maintain them, you might not want to be adding liquid fertilizers, CO2 injection, you know, all these kind of things that some people find a bit of a chore you can still create a beautiful aquarium without plants. And I think this is a, a perfect example of that. Obviously it's a huge example and a relatively expensive example, but there's no reason why you can't use these lessons in maybe your smaller aquariums at home. Okay guys, I'm gonna sign off there. Really hope you enjoyed this one. Such a beautiful aquarium in the beautiful home. Thanks so much to Jeff and Mike for inviting me along. You can expect more great content coming from my time here at Aquarium Design Group. So make sure you're subscribed and hit that like button if you have enjoyed it. And leave me a comment below. What plants would you put in here, if any? Let me know. You take care. Keep on scaping. Cheerio.